Hi, FCFM. This is Patrick Norris with RedIncRevival.com. I want to begin with, how are you doing? I mean, really, how are you doing? Maybe you're feeling moody or you are analyzing various emotional states throughout your day. If you looked at your highs and lows, maybe you are dealing with, I'm doing great. Maybe you're dealing with the midline or maybe you're below the midline and you're thinking, man, why is everybody else happy? Why am I anxious? Or why do I need to be perfect? Or why am I constantly feeling the need to be accepted by everybody who I'm leading or who's on my team? All of these things go back to what we would call your mental health, your mental health. Many people today are struggling. In fact, there are people that are seeing a massive up shoot in anxiety and uh, maybe depression and they're trying to figure out why why am i feeling the way i'm feeling why is everybody else so happy why do they seem to be happy when we look at statistics i want you to know that you are not alone the world health organization reports that in 2019 one in every eight people somewhere around nine 170 million around the world, they're living with some mental disorder and anxiety and depression disorders are the most common. In 2020, because of COVID-19's pandemic, there are increases in anxiety and depressive disorders with estimates the being around 26 to 28 percent increases respectively for anxiety and major depression disorders in just one year. I want you to think about Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 7 as leaders. And he says to remember, be mindful of them which have the rule over you, who've spoken unto you the word of God, whose faith follow, considering the end of their lifestyle, their conversation. And then he goes on to say, obey, or to have confidence and trust them that have the rule or leading over you and submit yourselves for they watch over your souls. I'm going to capture that they watch over your souls. The word soul in the Greek is psyche. Psyche. It's where we get the word psychology. There's so much here to consider when we talk about why you feel, think, process the way that you do. In fact, there is a triad for mental health and a triad of mental health protocols that are required to live and lead from a, a healthy place. Now, mental health, by its very terminology, is referring to your mind. Of course, the mind is referring to a part of the soul or psyche, and the mind is immaterial. It's eternal. The reason that I start with that is to watch over our souls or to have leadership in our roles as ministers is to watch over the souls of other people means that we first must to slow down and acknowledge that for people to live and flourishing, for them to have good mental health begins with how they're managing their soul or their spirit. This is where the real you is. It's where cognition, memory, and your ability to choose happens. In this triad of mental health protocols, we've got to address how to process in spirit and soul. How do you process in brain and body? And then thirdly, how do you process where interpersonal and social things are concerned? When we talk about, as an example, your spirit-soul protocols, First of all, it's incumbent on a person, if you believe the Bible from a Christian worldview, to be born again. Being born again is fundamental to a person to live in human flourishing. That in your soul, which is your capacity to bear the image of God, it's where your spirit, according to various philosophers like Dr. J.P. Moreland, the great uh, philosopher from Talbot University and, and Biola. This is an area of who we are that has different functions, compartments, capacities that we are able with, in this case, one capacity, the spirit, to contact and interact with God. The point being is that the soul is immaterial. 
And if you relegate everything about your cognition or your emotions to your brain, your neurons, your synapses, your axons, the various things that function neurobiologically in the brain, if we reduce it to that, we're going to miss the very core capacities within our consciousness, the very core of our nature, which is that we are a soul. We have various functions within that soul. So you, you've got to begin any mental health protocol with being born again. I think you also need to consider being baptized in the Holy Spirit and the quality of things like speaking in other tongues, praying in tongues, and what that does to the overall energy signature and that which is taking place even being received and interpreted through your, your brain and your body. Also things like devotional connections that require loving prayer. Things like reading your Bible, listening to preaching of the word, meditations, gratitude, and so on. Listening to worship music and really being fully engaged in activations of faith. Believing what God said about us, even when it doesn't look like it, even when we don't feel like it, when we activate the word. Now that is core for where energy comes into us. Remember the word of God is quick and powerful. Powerful is the word energes, where energy comes from. Quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, dividing asunder of the soul, the psyche, and the spirit. And actually divides as well the joints and the marrow. The word joints and marrow, marrow is translated throughout early Greek or ancient Greek history as a word that had to do with the nervous system, the brain. The marrow was really considered the substance that the brain functioned with. And so when he talks about the word of God infusing into our spirit, into our soul, and then it also captivating and breathing energy into our psyche, for which again, we are the stewards of our psyche and we're stewards as Christian leaders of other people's psyches. And then we have protocols around the brain and body. If you really want to live a healthy life emotionally, you're going to have to manage behavioral and chemical pieces, things that are related to dopamine, adrenaline, oxytocin, and endorphins. Things like sleep, how you sleep. And there are different protocols to help you sleep well, to get back into a healthy circadian clock. Exercise releases these neurochemicals that cause you to be, uh, again, emotionally regulated. Diet modifications. There's nothing so mood-altering than sugar and, and fructose. Uh, high... Uh, carbs. These carbs end up creating for us so many problems. For some people, uh, they have never considered that various drugs and, and alcohol. Alcohol actually creates emotional and psychological problems. And then things you can do, like uh, when it comes to light therapy or getting first thing in the day outside and seeing sunlight come into you that actually impacts your circadian clock. What you can do with heat exposure and cold exposure is profound to not only uh, causing you to feel like you're ready to go attack the day, but also for your cognition and for your memory and for the way you manage emotions. There's breathing protocols. And then, of course, there's cognitive behavioral protocols, things around, I have these emotions that I'm feeling, what's the self-talk and narrative that's happening within me, all the way to what's my meaning making of that that compels me into behavior that then causes me to have habits and finally develops out my character. Also things related to the protocols of empowerment. If I ever, if you ever get into a place where we feel like that we have no choice, we have no power, there's nothing that we can do. Believe it or not, our brain and body will support that thinking. Support it with neurochemicals to cause you to be stuck. 
But as soon as you move into empowerment, I may not know everything to do, but these are some things I can specifically do. And we begin to move into them. Our body also will begin to release the neurochemicals that cause us to feel empowered. And when you feel empowered, it changes the way your moods are and what you're feeling emotionally. And so that all is critical to brain-body protocols as, as well as things like a therapeutic relationship. But not only do you have your spirit-soul protocols, and not only do you have your brain-body protocols, but you also need to address interpersonal social protocols. And what that has to do with is that the way that we were engaging our family of origin set programming in us of how we bond and how we feel and what we experience all the way to today if we are not what's called self-differentiated. If we're not capable of being different and yet connected, being separate, individuated, and yet being connected to the people in our lives, if we're not skilled